First, I'd like to offer the congratulations of uh, the recipients for all the awards that are going to be here tonight for the Tipping Chamber of Commerce. Uh, congratulations. Uh, small business uh, of the 8th District is truly the backbone, and I appreciate all the hard work that you've all done here uh, to make this happen. I know that uh, they're kind of tough out there. They have tough economic times. But you all serve as examples how to operate businesses and even thrive in a current challenging environment. I decided to run for office because I looked at our country, where our country was heading. Massive debts, deficits, mountains of regulatory red tape, high unemployment coupled with uh, little job creation. I thought we needed to head in a much different direction. We are the United States of America. We can and should be doing better. We learned earlier this week that our deficit this year would be approximately $1.5 trillion, or about $200 billion more than was originally estimated. Over the past two years combined, we've seen over $3 trillion in deficit spending. And last December 31st, our total national debt toppled a staggering $14 trillion. To put that into some perspective, our national debt is now, each one of us here, man, woman, child, newborn baby that just was born today, your debt is $45,000. Uh, which case equates about $122,000 for every family in American household. About $17,500 of that $122,000 has been added in just the last two years alone. Spending like this is simply unsustainable, and it's time to cut up Washington, D.C.'s credit card. I have some ideas on how we can start working forward. For example, we could immediately save $60 billion by rescinding what is left of the failed stimulus bill. Cutting Medicare errors and earned income tax errors in half would save another $44 billion. To eliminate them entirely, we would save about $90 billion in savings. The federal government also spends about $25 billion on vacant land and property at homes. This could be an immediate savings to us. These are just a few examples of ways we can move immediately and saving money. Much of what we need to do right now to right our physical, our physical ship will require hard work and some serious soul-searching about America's priorities. But we must undertake these reforms or we will lose the America that we all grew up in. No longer can we wait for, wait for the higher levels of pain for the American people. It may hurt now, but it will be absolutely deadly for the next generation. That's our children and our grandchildren. That is the unfortunate position we now find ourselves in, based on the years of the federal government spending beyond its means. We must begin a national dialogue from where we go from here. So, what does that mean to small and medium-sized businesses owners? Well, historically, you have been the job creation engine that has powered the American economy. Businesses like yourselves are responsible for seven out of every ten jobs created in this country. Right now, high taxes and uncertainty from the federal government have prevented you from producing jobs we sorely need to recover from the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. How you can expand your business when you're waiting to see what regulations are about to be cast upon you, sometimes from a fiat federal government. How can we hire when we're worried about the taxes? are going to be raised against you to pay for the bloated bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. I have never believed that government can be a job creator. Every job created by the government must be paid in taxes on jobs or job creators from the private sector. The more jobs created this way, the greater the drag on the private sector. I do, however, believe that government can set the table for economic growth. First and foremost, we must reduce the uncertainty I just spoke about. We do that by ending the spending spree in Washington and pushing back on the eliminating unnecessary, burdensome regulatory policies coming from our nation's capital. These actions must happen soon, or we risk the economic stagnation that many of us see in Europe, 
and now Japan. On my end, I've been working on several agencies. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the Forest Service, the EPA, and the Army Corps of Engineers, just to name a few, to facilitate new mining opportunities in the 8th District. We have a vast natural resources, and the potential for high-skilled, high-paying jobs are here in Minnesota. My hope in going forward is that I will find willing partners in those agencies who, like me, are focused on both economic growth and conservation. I apologize that I can't spend more time with you this evening, but I very much appreciate the opportunity of being here. I very much look forward to working with you as we develop northern Minnesota to be the powerhouse that it once was. As I said in the beginning of my speech, I am your representative in Washington, not Washington's emissary to you. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me and keep me informed of how I can best serve the people of the 8th District. Let's work together to get Minnesotans back to work, and let's get our country back on its feet. Thank you.